SSH or secure shell is not just for securely remoting over or logging into a remote server, but it can be used also for, to transfer files, uh, copy files between the local machine and, and the remote machine, as well as uh, transfer ports uh, or forward ports. And uh, nowadays, most of us, we use our, um, we have our local machines, uh, laptops and development machines from which uh, we access our remote servers. So these uh, remote servers are usually um, Linux boxes or possibly other operating systems, but in most cases they are running an SSH server. So um, we access them using SSH clients. So this video is about how to successfully remote access your servers and how to do it securely, how to create keys, how to transfer those keys, how to use those keys, um, how to transfer files, copy files between your machine and the remote machine, and also the ports. So let's take a look. Um, so here on the left hand side, I have a local machine, let's say, and um, I want to connect to a remote machine. First thing is I need to create keys. Okay, so let's create some keys. I don't have any, let's say I don't have any keys. I'm just simulating. So if I don't have any keys, I will create it them by SSH key gen. So this generates keys. It says generating public private key pair. Where would you like to store it? Yeah, sure. Well, ignore the fact that I'm using a root user. This could be any user, okay? It doesn't have to be root at all. So now ID, uh, it's going to create a key pair. Now, the, why do we need keys? Um, in fact, we need a pair of keys. There is a private key and then there is a public key. So the private key stays private, it stays with you, and the public key is what you distribute to remote servers. So um, we are creating this private key, which I started with SSH keygen, and then I'm going to take the defaults. Uh, so it's going to create in this directory, this ID underscore RSA private key passphrase. So now you could give a passphrase or you could omit it. That's up to you. Mm, most of the times I secure my private keys, keep them on my laptop and uh, the laptop itself is locked behind a password wall. So uh, it, you might be able to get away with not having a passphrase. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go with empty or no passphrase. So it's asking me to confirm that. I say yes, I confirm. And now it has generated some key. Let's see where it has created it. So there is the SSH directory created. And if I say ls minus ltra dot SSH. So this is the, let me just make this a little bigger. This is this is my file. Mm, the, this is the public key and this is the private key. So now I, I want to use this key to remote into a server. Um, let's uh, let's say I have an account on a server called office.spinspire.com and uh, my username is Jitesh. So you basically say your username at your remote server and then you SSH, prefix it with that. And if I press enter, at this point it says, it's going to ask me for password. First it's saying, do you trust the server? Uh, usually you say yes. Now it's asking me for a password. So 
I will just type my password and I am logged in. But this is not using my keys at all. Okay, so if I want to actually use the keys, I exit, I'm back to my client machine, and this time I say SSH copy ID. This will copy your keys from the local machine to the remote machine, which is office at dot dot com uh, under this user account which is jitesh so let's press enter it is once again asking me for password that's okay because right now my keys are not on the remote machine i press enter and now it says number of keys added one it's the newly generated key that i generated under ssh that it basically took the pub key and sent it to the other server. So let me show you. If I print my id rsa.pub, so it's a longish key, yes, but it ends, ends in this string, right? Let's, uh, now that it has been transferred, this time, if I tr try to remote into that machine, it will not ask me for a password. See, no password was required because I, just before that, I transferred my key. And now the key that has been added is QSHSWU, right, ending in that. So if I look at my, on this server, if I look at my .ssh slash authorized keys, at the very end, I should find that same key. There it is. Q S H S W U equal to root at this. This is where it came from. So this is, so let's take a look at this again. What is happening? You create a key pair, which is um, private and public keys on your local machine. You transfer the public key using SSH copy ID. At that time, you do have to type in your password, but it is possible that you do not have, uh, you don't know your password. Sometimes machines, you don't even create a password. In that situation, you have to email your, your public key to the, to the administrator of this machine, and they will go into your account, and then at, in your account, they will create this file, or they will append um, they will just whatever file you uh, public key you send them let's say id underscore rsa.pub file that you send them they will say, append that file to your accounts so whichever is your account so uh, the administrator will probably do something like this okay so this is how they might end up doing it let's uh, exit this and uh, uh, come back let's see what else we need to uh, cover so this is how we are we are connecting securely the one thing that you should know is that in these ssh communication channels they are encrypted so the and the private and public keys they help with authentication as well as with encryption okay so there are a few other things. We can copy files between the current uh, place and the remote place. So if, if I go to the remote and uh, let's say I have a directory. See, they have droid cam and the, it has a bunch of files. I can copy one or more files, say readme. I, if I cat the readme, oops. So it has something in it, okay. So I come back to my machine and I can say secure copy jitesh at office.spinspire.com and then the path, the path is home jitesh uh, dev droid cam read me dot md to current directory. 
you see it copied that file from remote to local and if I carry it I should see the same information yes it's there so let me delete this now I, I can I don't have to copy just files I can copy entire directories so let me just show you so I can copy the entire directory like this right but all I have to do is give a minus R option and now it's copying the entire directory okay so it has now copied everything if you see there is this droid cam folder and if I go to droid cam and uh, Okay, all the files are there one more thing is let's say I make a small change if I make a small change to suppose readme.md and on the remote server right um, SSH Jitesh at now this is a bit long huh so there is a, a trick to make this simpler you just open your dot SSH slash config and in there you put a host let's say office and then host name is this is a, a config file which makes things easier host name is office.spinspire.com and then user is jitesh if you do these things save and quit now you don't have to say very the, the long command like 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 this you don't have to say all of this you just say get uh, office the host name that I host uh, the name of the host was office that's it you do this and now you're logged in so this is good now I can let's say I made some I, I log into it again and I make some change let's say dev Android cam. Let's say I create a new file. Uh, I'll just say echo hi to foo.txt. Oops, I meant to do this. Okay, now I want to bring foo.txt back to my machine here. But maybe I don't even know what their names is. Names are. And maybe uh, should I just copy the entire directory again? That would be too much. Too much transfer. There is a simpler way. That way is rsync. When, when you use rsync, it only transfers, it does remote syncing and it transfers only the bytes that are missing. So rsync minus z as in compress, v as in verbose, and a as in keep the attributes of the files when you transfer them. And then Give it the remote path which is office now we can have use a shorter name uh, dev droid cam and then copy it to current directories droid cam once you do that it says rsync not found so let me add apk add rsync okay let's see and look at that how fast that was in fact it the total size was in five megabytes but it transferred um, like what 25 kilobytes and then 21 kilobytes so 26 kilobytes so if I do it again one more time second time around even less sent 21 bytes received 476 bytes so basically rsync is very cheap you can now if I look at my right cam directory I should have a foo file in there see that and um, if I cat it it has that thing high if I modify this now if I say right cam foo let's modify it and say add another line hello save and quit this time I transfer in the opposite direction which means I says rsync zva dot slash droid cam and send it to the other end 
And it's important to keep uh, slash, trailing slash on the source side, but not on the destination side. I'm not sure why that is, but I've seen that problem exists. So I transfer and it is sending only one file, foo.txt. Now when I SSH to office and cat the droid cam foo, it should have an extra line. See, hi and then hello. So this is how we synchronize. This, this is very powerful. This could be several gigabytes of uh, data, but if you changed only a little bit, then only a little bit will be transferred. So that's the benefit of rsync. Now, finally, there is something else I want to show you, which is um, port forwarding. So there is uh, there is a, a Docker container running here. If I say Docker p, uh, ps grep, mm, let's say Docker container inspect there is one box. Uh, GraphQL one. Yeah, so this one, this is a GraphQL server and it has an IP address of 172.21.0.15 and it is listening on port 8080. I can prove it to you by running curl. Remember, this is a remote server, so I cannot run a graphical browser, but I can run this command line browser. And if I look at this console, you see, there's some HTML being sent. But now if I copy this and open a browser, put it in this browser, let's say, it cannot be reached. So what's the issue? The issue is this. I'm in on one network and this server is on a different network. Uh, yes, they are all both on the internet, but then this is a private IP address that only this server can access. Uh, so how do I access this IP and port, which is not accessible to me? That's where SSH comes to the res rescue. What we do is port forwarding. How do we do it? We let's exit this part. And I recall my SSH command. I paste the I port and IP only the IP and port and then I say minus L local forwarding and then let's say I use any port number I could use 8088 so this will be the local port on this end and uh, uh, that will be the remote port okay so if I let me do this in a different window yes okay so if I so at this point port port has been forwarded if I connect to port 80 local host 8088 local host 8088 console there you go I see the Hasura GraphQL console. So that's what I wanted to show you. This is possible only because, because I said, when you connect to office, take this local port number and connect it or link it to this remote IP and port pair. Now the opposite of this, which is the remote port forwarding so imagine if there was some place that was accessible to my machine here how will the remote server access it well that's called remote port forwarding uh, and there the only thing you change is you change replace this l with uh, capital r and then the rest of it remains same this is the port that the remote program will connect on on their end and this is the port that should be accessible to me from my end and those will be linked. Uh, anyway, I, I won't be showing that right now. Now, this kind of a thing can be also made permanent. If all you have to do is just um, 
if you want to always forward these ports, uh, then all you have to do is just go into your .ssh config file and uh, let's say here's my office server I can just say local forward the local port number 8088 and then the the remote IP and port and here's the remote if you write it up the word SSH should not be there. Yeah, if you write it like this, then it will be local forwarded every every time. Okay, sorry, I have some allergy. All right. So let's see what else do we have. Mm, I think those are the things I wanted to cover in this video. So SSH is not just a single tool to do remote telnet kind of remote session. It does a whole bunch of other things, copying files, port forwarding, and, and so on and so forth. Now, your server will probably be a Linux server, but your client machine could be Windows, Mac, or some, some other type. And there, if you're doing development, you can do development from your local machine, and yet your runtime environment can be the remote server. And here's the, some a bonus. I want to show you how you can use uh, VS Code. Let's open a, open VS Code here, and I will connect to a remote folder in VS Code. VS Code has this um, extension called Remote. Uh, yeah, this one remote-ssh. This is what I'm using. So install this extension and once you install the extension you'll get this icon and in this icon you will see in this sorry in this panel you will see all the remote servers that you have. Okay and now I am going to connect to this office server. They connect to host in current window and that's it. Now the amazing thing is if you open a shell the shell is not on my machine, it's on the remote machine. And I can see all the files, everything on that server. If I open a folder, dev, droid cam, and you will notice that this is the droid cam folder on the remote machine, including the fact that there is this foo file. You see that? And every change, if I can go to my If I go to this place in SSH to office and CD dev droid cam cat foo. Okay, if I make uh, changes to this file, let's say third line, and as soon as I save it, this has that same line. So which means um, this is very impressive. Uh, VS Code folks have really done a good job with this. Um, you can now access all of these files as if they were local and you can compile, you can program with them, you can run tests, do whatever you need to do. Just um, forward the ports as, as appropriate, you see. You can forward a port, just like I was saying, and uh, you know, and access them locally using your browser or whatever other client programs. So SSH, like I said, is a very powerful framework. I hope you learned something. This will hopefully make you very productive with all your remote development as well as remote operations.